Good morning and welcome on this Epiphany Sunday Baptism of our Lord. I invite you to stand as you are able and to turn to number 119, As with Gladness, Men of Old. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us, who know you now by faith, to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened. 
and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Once again, the way the calendar falls this year, we have an interesting Sunday. Two weeks ago, December 24th, was both the fourth Sunday of Advent and Christmas Eve, making for the interesting liturgical situation of the angel Gabriel announcing to Mary in the morning that she was pregnant and then Mary giving birth that night. Today, we also celebrate two major feast days in the church occurring on the same weekend. The day of Epiphany is always January 6th. January 6th marks the end of the 12 days of Christmas and is the day when we celebrate the arrival of the Magi, the gospel story that we just heard. It's a beautiful story of three wise men from distant lands following the light of a mysterious star that lit up the sky, a sign that a king for all people, the son of the Most High, had been born. They journey night and day, led to Bethlehem by the light of that star to present gifts to this Christ child, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, symbols in and of themselves of what was to come. Because January 6 falls on different days of the week each year, we normally celebrate Epiphany on the Sunday that comes after the first Sunday of Christmas. So there's a second Sunday of Christmas usually. But this year there was only one. And the Sunday after January 6 in the liturgical calendar is always the feast day of the baptism of our Lord, the day that begins Jesus' ministry as an adult. Neither of these two important festivals in the church year, Epiphany and Baptism of Our Lord, can be skipped. And so we have the interesting combination today of the baby Jesus receiving gifts from the Magi and Jesus as the adult being baptized at the River Jordan. But that's okay, because the word Epiphany, the day of Epiphany, and that's January 6th, and the season of Epiphany that stretches until Ash Wednesday, means manifestation. This is the period in the liturgical calendar when it becomes known to us, made clear who this Jesus is. Jesus is more than a baby born in lowly circumstances to a faith-filled teen mom and a compassionate, loving father. 
That is clearly evident in the arrival of these great seers from distant lands, led to the stable by a great light, and then in the story of Jesus' baptism, which we will hear shortly. When the Spirit descends upon Jesus like a dove, and a voice from heaven proclaims, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the imprimatur of Jesus as the Son of God, destined to teach us the way to live and to die and to rise again. After being tempted in the wilderness with the ways of the world, Jesus will be ready to begin God's work, teaching the world to care for the marginalized, the forgotten, the lost, the poor, the imprisoned, and the lonely, embracing humility and servanthood, even when the world teaches otherwise. That is the calling into which we, too, are baptized, and why we affirm our own baptisms on this day of remembrance of the baptism of Jesus. Henry Van Dyke, a Presbyterian clergy person and a professor of English at Princeton University at the turn of the 20th century, wrote a little story that fits this unique juxtaposition of feast days beautifully. You may have heard of it. It's called The Story of the Other Wise Man. Henry Van Dyke himself wrote of this tale, I do not know where this little story came from. Out of the air, perhaps. One thing is certain. It is not written in any other book, nor is it to be found among the ancient lore of the East. And yet, I have never felt as if it were my own. It was a gift, and it seemed to me as if I knew the giver. So the story is about Artaban, a fourth magi, who with his other three friends studied the heavens for truth about God. In the ancient writings, they discovered a promise of a beautiful new star that would arise in the eastern sky, and when that perfect star, star would arise, it would be a sign that a great king had been born, the truth sent from the one God, the Son of the Most High. Artaban believed the time was near, so he sold all that he had to buy three jewels to carry as gifts for the newborn child. These priceless gems were a sapphire as blue as the Persian sky at night, a ruby as red as the first rays of sunshine, and a pearl as white and pure as the snow on the mountaintop at night. It was then that he saw a spark in the sky that grew larger and larger as it ascended higher into the sky. It was the most beautiful star, and immediately he knew in his heart. It is the sign, he exclaimed. The king is coming and I will go to meet him. He and his three friends had agreed that when the star appeared, they would meet within 10 days. Artaban saddled his fastest horse and galloped off, barely stopping for drink or food on the way. On the 10th day, with three more hours to go, his exhausted horse suddenly stopped as if afraid. Artaban urged him forward, but then he saw what his horse had seen, the body of a man by the side of the road. Artaban approached. The man seemed dead. But as he turned to go, the man groaned and then reached out his hand to touch the hem of Artaban's cloak. Artaban knew that without help, the man would not make it through the night. But he also knew that he had no time to spare before his friends would leave on the journey. Artaban turned to the star and prayed, God of truth and light, show me the way of wisdom which only you know. He gave the man some sips of cool water and mixed up a healing potion from the remedies that he always had with him. For several hours he cared for the man until finally the man regained his strength. Who are you? the man asked. I have nothing to repay you for your kindness. Then the man told him, but I will tell you this, from our Hebrew prophets, we have learned that the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem, not in Jerusalem, 
and that is where you must seek him. With the man refreshed, Artaban jumped onto his horse and headed to meet his friends. When he arrived as dawn was breaking, his friends were gone. A note remained, explaining that they had waited until midnight, but could wait no longer. They had set off across the desert and said that he should follow. Artaban knew that his horse could never make it. He needed a camel and supplies. With a sad heart, he sold his precious sapphire, knowing that it was the only way he could continue on the journey. With a camel and food, he set out. After many long weeks with searing sun and chilling cold at night, he arrived in Bethlehem. He came across a cottage with a woman rocking her baby to sleep. He explained his quest to find the king, born as a baby, and his three friends bearing gifts. The woman knew of the three who had come from the east bearing gifts, but, she told him, they had left hurriedly after presenting their gifts. And then, just last evening, the father, mother, and the child had disappeared as well. It was whispered, she said, that they had fled to Egypt to escape danger. Artaban's heart sank. But then there was a sudden commotion in the street and the clanging of swords and armor. King Herod's soldiers were coming to kill the infant children. The woman snatched up her baby and hid in a corner. A centurion appeared at the door. Artaban stood in the doorway and glared into the soldier's eyes. He took out the huge ruby from his tunic and said to the soldier, I am all alone here and am waiting to give this gem to the centurion who will give me my peace. The greedy soldier grabbed the ruby and then ordered his men to march on, for there was no child at that home. O oh God of truth, Artaban prayed, forgive me for telling this lie and for giving to a man that gift which was to be for you. Will I ever be worthy enough to see the face of the king? But the woman blessed him. Because you've saved the life of my little one, may the Lord bless you and keep you all of your days. Determined, Artaban headed for Egypt. Month after month, year after year, he searched for the king. He didn't find the child to worship. But he found many along the way who needed help. He fed the hungry, bought clothes for the naked, cared for the sick and for those in prison. Everywhere he went, he carried the beautiful pearl close to his heart, hoping to someday present to the, it to the one he sought. Thirty-three years of searching went by, and he had grown old and tired. He decided to take one last journey to Jerusalem. There he discovered a large crowd shouting and pushing, gathering for the hanging of two robbers and a man named Jesus who claimed to be the Son of God and King of the Jews. Artaban's heart raced. Perhaps this was the king for whom he had been searching. He hurried in an effort to reach the enemies of the king to offer his pearl to rescue him before he died. On his way, however, he was stopped by a group of soldiers dragging a young girl who was crying, her clothes disheveled. She cried out to Artaban for help. She was being sold as a slave to pay for her deceased father's debt. Artaban looked into her eyes. He was so close to the end of his search, and yet he knew that giving up his pearl as ransom to free this young girl would be a deed of true love. And wasn't that the essence of the one true God? Artaban took the pearl and gave it to the girl. This is your ransom, he said. At that moment, the sky darkened, the fields rumbled, the walls of the houses rocked, and the soldiers fled in terror. Artaban and the girl were left alone. Then a heavy section of roof tile crashed down upon Artaban. As he fell to the ground, he heard a voice, Artaban, you have been a good and faithful servant. I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you brought me clothes. I was in prison and you visited me. 
Come now to the rest I have prepared for you. With his dying breath, Artaban protested, When did I see you in need? And the voice said, Whenever you helped one in need, you helped me. Then understanding and peace fell upon Artaban's soul. His journey on earth was ended, his treasures accepted. The other wise man had found the king. Where did that story come from, Henry Van Dyke? This magi, the other magi, didn't find the Christ child who'd been born in a manger in Bethlehem. He didn't find the child whisked away as a refugee in Egypt. He didn't even find the adult hanging on the cross. But he did encounter Christ all along that lifetime of a journey in those to whom he showed compassion, in those he loved and cared for along the way. That's called discipleship. And it's our calling, too, as baptized followers of Jesus. The best gift is not something precious as a sapphire as blue as the Persian sky at night, or a ruby as red as the first rays of sunshine, or even a pearl as white and pure as the snow on the mountain top at twilight. The best gift is to extend compassion, care, and love to the people God puts along our paths, just as God extended that to us in the gift of God's Son, who lived and died and broke the bonds of death for us. Each and every day, we have the opportunity to show God's love through Jesus Christ towards others. That is at the heart of this manifestation of Jesus, an epiphany that has within it life for us and for our world. Amen. We will now hear the readings for Baptism of Our Lord Sunday. The first reading is from the book of Genesis, the first chapter. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The psalm will be read responsively. I invite you to read the verses in bold. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The 
The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. And in the temple of the Lord, we are crying, Glory! The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. The second reading is from the book of Acts, the 19th chapter. While Apollos was in Corneth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord, Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. Would you stand? gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. As Artaban believed and searched for the truth sent from the one God, the Son of the Most High, and who in the end discovered Christ in servant compassion and love toward those around him, so let us renew our baptismal vows of trust and discipleship. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Jesus. Having professed our faith, we turn to the promises that were made when we were baptized and at our confirmation and that we renew today. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
Thank you for that beautiful music meditation, Manny. I invite you to stand for the prayers of the people. Please join me in the prayers of the people. After each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you who led people from far and wide to the light of Christ, and who at the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Today, in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Scottish Episcopal Church and the Diocesan cycle of prayer. We pray for the clergy, staff, congregation, families, and communities of the Episcopal Church. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Confession of Sin is found on page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share the peace of the Lord. God's peace, everyone. You may be seated. If you are visiting with us, welcome. Uh, please take a moment to sign one of the cards in the pew pockets. You can place that in the offering bowl so that we can welcome you uh, more officially. Uh, officially. Um, name tags, as you know, are in the back. They're by first name. If you do not have one, just sign the clipboard and uh, Susan will get one made for you. Uh, the January newsletter is out. There should be copies at both doors. I actually didn't check. I forgot to do that. But there should be copies at both doors. If there aren't ushers, let me know, and I'll get some made between the services. But it is posted online, so you can find that by going to our website. Uh, di diocesan announcement. There are, there's a new um, formation class that is starting up if you would like to explore licensed ministries in the church specifically as a worship leader, as a catechist, as a preacher, right? So um, please do sign up. 
Um, if you are interested in any of those, the uh, formation course starts January 13th with the diocese, and it's an opportunity to explore those ministries and whether you have a calling uh, to follow in that path. There's also the ordination track for the priesthood or for the diaconate. That is a three-year program, and that is done through uh, the church seminaries, but can be done online. So if you are interested in that as well, um, talk to the diocese or talk with me. First Sunday of the month coffee hours is today uh, after both services, so please do make your way over to the parish hall after this service. Then at 9 o'clock, Children's Christian Adventure begins with um, Uncle Bees and Uncle Chucky in uh, the, the adventure room off the parish hall. And then at 9.30 is the choir rehearsal here. Uh, also, go over to the parish hall just to go ice skating. It's like really, <laughs> it's shiny smooth. Well done, all of you that worked on that floor. It looks great. But you have to go check it out uh, to appreciate it. Uh, reminder, do not keep any valuables in your car, please, that people can see. There have been a lot of break-ins of cars around town, and our parking lot is not exempt. So please just put your stuff in your trunk or, uh, you know, don't ha just don't have it looking, you know, that you can see in and see it sitting there on the seat. Uh, let's see. I got a good chuckle out of the bulletin. It says that we are taking chartreuse over to the school across the way. Um, that is a French herbal liqueur. Um, it, was, it was from the uh, uh, Carthusia uh, monks, um, but we are not taking liquor over to the school. <laughs> We are taking charcuterie uh, boards, which uh, have crackers and um, fruit and cheese on it. So that will be, uh, those will be made up tomorrow. If you are interested in helping with that, Muffin and Velma are um, putting that together. I think that was spell check, by the way. I'm, I'm pretty darn sure that was spell check. Um, but if you would like to help with that, just talk with Muffin or Velma or um, come by on Monday morning. And also don monetary donations are being accepted for that um, gift of love over to the school. It's their return, the teachers and administrators return to, for the second semester. And um, they want the uh, KMS, Keilikulani Middle School uh, out outreach group wants them to feel uh, welcomed back. Toiletries we continue to collect for Wally House uh, Houseless Ministry. Thank you, Beth, for taking that over there. A Moment with Music continues to be posted every weekday by 6 a.m. on Facebook and the website. Bible Study by Zoom is on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Just ask me for the link. Thursday is Jazz Vespers at 6 o'clock, both in person and online. Vestry meeting is January 17th. Just take note of that by Zoom. Um, approval of the budget will take place at that meeting and then Sunday January 21st after this service well nine o'clock so you can go get some cookies and coffee at nine we will have Q&A for the annual meeting and also the, for those that want to participate by zoom we're going to do it both in person and by zoom you can test out your equipment and then the next Sunday January 28th is our annual meeting and that will be held also in the sanctuary space, 845, following this service, and uh, by Zoom or in person. So that's coming up. Birthdays. Um, we missed uh, Reverend David Blanchett's birthday, which was last Sunday. So we should include him uh, today. And uh, his birthday is on a Sunday. So I do think we should sing happy birthday to him. Um, it's David, and he and his wife, uh, Martha, are both reverends. They worship with us, and David has been the one taking a lot of photos around here for us recently uh, and helping out with outreach ministries. So let us sing happy birthday to him. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear David. Happy birthday to you. And we have on Monday, Jason Barroza and Aliyah Peterson. On Tuesday, Colin Leong and Sherry Yoshida. On Wednesday, Kristen Connors, Ricky Dang, Lois Gray, and Paul Ewan. And on Thursday, Susan Dang and Reed Kagemoto. Popular week. 
So let's pray for them. The prayer is found on page 830 in your Books of Common Prayer. Page 830, number 50. And I will add the names. Page 830, number 50. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants. David, Jason, Aaliyah, Colin, Sherry, Kristen, Ricky, Lois, Paul, Susan, and Reed, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Colin and Pam have a wedding anniversary, 58th, I think, on the same day as Colin's birthday, uh, which is Tuesday. So let us pray for their anniversary, and that's not in the Book of Common Prayer, but you can uh, pray along with me. Let us pray. Gracious and ever-living God, look mercifully upon Colin and Pam as they celebrate their marriage. Grant them your blessing and assist them with your grace, that with true fidelity and steadfast love, they may continue to grow and rejoice in the promises and vows they've made to one another. Give them grace to live together in love, forgiveness, and mutual care. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And traveling. Do we have travelers today? I know the Dangs are traveling. Anyone else? And I know Ashlyn is also traveling, going back to school. Yes, Jan. You're leaving on Wednesday for... Ooh, Singapore and Thailand. You and Willis? Awesome, awesome. How long are you gone? 27th. Ooh, very good. Okay, we'll add Jan and Willis as they go holo holo around the world. Um, anyone else? Okay, let us pray for Terry and Susan, who on Tuesday are heading to Las Vegas for Susan's birthday. Uh, and they'll come back lucky, we hope. And, yeah. and then Ashlyn Kim, who is going off to college on Saturday. Uh, she is one of our uh, nursing students. Thank you, thank you to Ashlyn. And then for Willis and Jan, who are heading off to Singapore and Thailand. So let us pray. The travel prayer is in the Book of Common Prayer. It's on page 831 at the top. Page 831 at the top. Let us pray. O God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, in particular Terry and Susan, Ashlyn and Willis and Jan. Surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Wonderful. Have a great time, all of you that are traveling. At this time, we will have the offering. We know people give in many different ways in this congregation, through the mail, through online, in the bowl. We are grateful to you, to you for your support of this ministry. As that is happening, we, I invite you as well to sing hymn number 296, We Know That Christ Is Raised. You may remain seated for that. When uh, Joseph transitions to what star is this, only verse 5, that is printed in your bulletin. Um, I invite you to stand for Eucharist. When it comes time for Eucharist, we proceed down the center aisle. Uh, both sides can come, take a place along the rail, either standing or kneeling, and then return by the side ramps. If the stairs are an issue, just go up and down the side ramp.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you've delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you've brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Together we pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God come and be fed.
I invite you to stand or kneel as you are able and to turn to the post-communion prayer printed on page 9 of your bulletins. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of Christ and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now send us out to do the work you've given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending forth hymn is Arise, Your Light is Come. with the gift of the Holy Spirit, go in peace to love and serve the Lord.